you know, anyone who is successful um, needs to have skill, uh, they need to have knowledge, they need to have behaviour, and they need to have a mindset. So, um, a little bit of context. I run a company called Transform Performance International. I've been doing that now for around about 20 years. We've um, helped some of the most famous organizations in the world to perform better through people. Um, that means um, helping organizations develop better leaders, better salespeople, better communicators, better collaborators. That work has um, included developing skills. That work has helped um, organizations develop knowledge it's helped them um, think about the way they do things in a different way in the context of change the piece that has always been uh, most interesting to me is the mindset and what I mean by that is the mindset the attitudes the belief systems that distinguish top performers from the rest and um, some years ago I was at an elite entrepreneurs group and listening to somebody who was incredibly successful present. And I could observe their behavior, but what I couldn't observe is what was going on in their head, what their mindset was, what their attitude was, what their belief was. And I thought it would be a really good idea to research and investigate if there is a common uh, backbone, for want of a better phrase, that binds successful entrepreneurs together. Um, and I embarked upon um, beginning to research into what became known as the entrepreneur's uh, secret, um, sec secret code. But it became apparent to uh, myself and my colleague very, very quickly that our business focuses on uh, helping large corporates um, and large corporate challenges are not so much about entrepreneurship, they're more about uh, sales and commercial growth and leadership. So actually what we did is we studied uh, sales and we, um, and we embarked upon uh, research with a thousand salespeople globally. Um, and we wrote a book called The Salesperson Secret Code. And then our publisher, um, because of the success of that book, encouraged us to do research into leadership, which we did, um, along with our academic partners. Um, and we then wrote a book called The Leader's uh, Secret Code. So The Secret Code, um, in summary, is a formula that individuals could adopt that will mean that they can um, effectively align themselves to people who are at the top of their uh, top of their game. I quite often think about it as being like the recipe on the tin of Coca-Cola. The ingredients are fairly obvious, but the magic is in getting the blend um, optimized in order that it tastes in the way the the most successful product tastes. So from a leadership point of view, I think everybody would know the attributes. What they don't know is how do you get the blend just right in order that you are more likely to be at the top of your game. Well, um, as I mentioned a moment ago, you, you know, anyone who is successful um, needs to have skill, uh, they need to have knowledge, they need to have behavior, and they need to have a mindset. Um, sometimes a mindset is referred to as an attitude, sometimes it's referred to as a belief system. Skills are easy to develop because um, that's about relentless practice. Um, knowledge is easy to acquire because that's about relentless study. Um, behavior um, becomes slightly more challenging. On the other hand, most people can uh, replicate the behavior that is required by their organization. The, the most challenging thing to change is somebody's mindset and attitude. And actually, the, you know, the grand irony is if you can change the mindset and attitude of somebody, you will also change the knowledge, the skill and the behavior. So what, what often organizations do is that they um, 
they neglect the mindset piece and they focus on the skill piece and then they wonder why having trained and developed their people that performance um doesn't 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 change but just to answer your question in a really simple way um from a behavior point of view the kind of behavior that sets sales people apart are things like their level of curiosity um you know so one of the things that you will notice with top performers is they have an insatiable level of curiosity not simply to fill out their questionnaire or their form or get to an end point as quickly as possible but they have a genuine interest in what's going on around them why people are doing what they're doing how people are doing what they're doing what they need to do in order to achieve um, greater levels of success and what they also do is they master the art of listening um, again not in order to close a sale but they're listening to intimately understand the other party um, not just from a logical level but from an emotional level so I think if you think about it from a behavior point of view I think it is in in the zone of questioning and listening in order for them to master that art they've got to have a mindset that says actually that will be the difference maker for me and therefore i'm going to become world class at asking questions and listening so i'm going to give you a really simple answer to that so all of the research says that um stories are likely to have up to 40 times the impact of a traditional data driven presentation so so if you want to have greater levels of impact if you want to have a higher level of outcome if you want to achieve greater success then influence others through stories rather than um, cognitive logical data arguments it's, 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 it's not to say either or but what it is saying is that you can enrich something that is arguably quite boring by telling a um a great a, a great story so so you know a good place to go if you want if you if you if you want to read evidence there's a really good book called talk like ted so most of your readers, most of your listeners will be familiar with TED Talks. Talk Like TED um, is an analysis of, I think it was the top 10 TED Talks ever based on the number of viewers. And one of the things that you will find is that the researchers have, have, have extracted the patterns of the best of the best. Um, and there is absolutely no question that all of the best of the best tell stories and grab the attention of their audience um, in a way that perhaps others um, others others don't. And I think the second second part is what can businesses do? Well, they can stop doing some of the things that put people asleep and bore them rigid so things like death by powerpoint um, things like very lengthy documents now i know there's a place for some of that um but it's a it, it, it's a case of reducing that and enriching the narrative through real stories and what it also does is it means anyone communicating in a in a corporate environment if they tell a story they can share their emotion yeah very difficult to share emotion in a powerpoint deck or in a word or pdf um, document so i think most people would recognize that they gain and extract greater value when they engage with somebody who demonstrates passion demonstrates vulnerability demonstrates authenticity and tells a story that becomes memorable for life I was about to say with it, you know, with great ease. Actually, it's a, it, it's a really challenging thing to 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 do. Um, but if we talk about um, people performance, you know, which is the focus of your uh, the focus of your question, um, 
What an organization can begin to do is that they can begin to understand effectively what their secret code is or what the DNA is of somebody who will succeed in their organization. So what are the um, what are the psychological attributes that are most likely to mean that somebody succeeds in that particular in that particular organization? Um, typically, you would do that using benchmarking tools, um, psychometric instruments, um, uh, development centers, and a combination of all of those things to begin to build data libraries of um, what the footprint is of successful people in the organization and then what you can do is you can begin to map um, individuals who are working there against that to work out what the delta is and what it is you need to do in order to get them from A to B. Uh, you can also use that data analytics to recruit people who are more likely to succeed in your organization. So quite often you will will know and your readers will, will, will indeed know that um, that somebody who is successful in a competing organization will not necessarily be successful in your organization when you when when you recruit them because you may have a different culture a different history a different business model it is a different um a different dna funda fun fundamentally so using data analytics um is a, an incredibly powerful way to either make decisions or um, form part of the equation of making uh, of making decisions. And look, you know, without trying to oversell data analytics, think about sport. You know, if you think about the top rugby teams in the world or the top football teams in the world or the top athletes in the world, um, they all now use data analytics to inform them as to how they might improve their diet, how they might improve their exercise, how they how they how they might play in a different um, in a different model or a different method in order to um, in order to improve their out their outcome. So it's not the only answer, but it is probably a tipping point or a difference making point.